shaking in our land There's a battle for the souls of men Wake up, Christian, and strengthen what remains For there's a shaking, a shaking in our land There's a shaking, shaking in our land There's a battle for the souls of men Wake up, Christian, and strengthen what remains For there's a shaking, a shaking in our land Hallelujah. There's a shaking in our land. Amen. What a what a song fitting for the times that we're in. My name is David Edwards. I'm um, interim pastor at Hoskins Avenue Baptist Church. Greetings to you today. This morning, I bring a word to you um, that the Lord has laid on my heart. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses um, 25 through 27. Chapter 12, verses 25 through 27. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And so here's what thus saith the Lord. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns us from heaven. Verse 26 says, At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Verse 27 says, This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made in order that things that cannot be shaken may remain. Amen. May God add a blessing to his word. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today, for your word, God, that comes from Hebrews, that lets us know, Lord, you will shake the earth. And we are in a shaking right now. So, Father, today, have your way, Lord, that lives will be sa uh, saved and souls will be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have a word that God has laid on my heart, and it stems back to what I voiced on midnight uh, the first day of this year. Midnight. Uh, at midnight, January the 1st, I posted a message on Facebook, social media, that reflected my thoughts concerning 2020, the year in review, and of things to come in 2021. Um, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, so here's, what, here's what I said. Here's just a little bit of what, was, what, what I mentioned in my post on Facebook. I said, as we leave 2020 and cross over into 2021, know that God is gracious and merciful toward us all. He has allowed this season to happen, this season of shaking, so that true believers may worship him in spirit and in truth. Wow, little did I know or that anyone know or expect that things that, un that played out this week in our nation's capital would take place. Uh, you know what I'm referring to. It's been all over the media, uh, the things, the rioting that took place, possibly incited by the president himself. Now, don't get it wrong. I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not here to bash, but many predicted this very thing could happen. Perhaps you yourself uh, 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 predicted that it could happen. Let's be real. Perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps we all knew the potential and the possibility that things could go south very fast, that things could happen uh, quickly. Uh, and, so, and so, yes, they did. They went south 
at, at any moment, things could break out and go bad south very fast. Yes, it happened. When you consider the turbulent climate in Washington uh, among our government officials, when you consider what has been happening in the uh, preceding months up to this new year, th listen, there is no wonder things happened the way that they did. Uh, government uh, has, has taken their eyes or had taken their eyes off of the climate barometer. Being able to predict, being able to see what was ahead, being able to reason uh, with good sense that something terrible could happen. What we and others around the world experienced this week um, was appalling. It was it was painstakingly miserable to look at. It it, it but before our very eyes, we witnessed a rioting mob of thugs attack our capital, our strong fort, the citadel of our very democracy. As many of us watched on in disbelief, it was horrible to see, terrible to look at. All around the world, people saw this chaotic situation unfolding here in the United States. So bad that five people lost their lives. How could something like this happen in the United States? Why? did something like this have to happen in our country? These are questions that you may have had, that others may have had, and, and, and but certain, certainly those in leadership are asking themselves now. While others are asking that question, that, that, or those questions, there, there are some that, that have showed uh, 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 that they predicted this would happen. I'm not going to get into name calling, but there are those who are on record stating that this very thing would happen. Listen, we watched as, as many were in dismay, bewilderment, hiding, and seeking a cover from the rioting mob. Remember, there was a potential and a possibility that this could always happen. You know it, I knew it, and our leaders knew it too. You've heard the saying, as some have come out now saying, listen, we weren't ready for this. Uh, 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 we, we, we didn't know this was gonna happen. Uh, if, 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 if you play with fire, let me tell you, you will get burned. You've heard them say, you've heard the saying that, that if you play with fire, you will get burned. Well, it's as if government themselves played with fire, knowing the potential, knowing the possibilities, but they didn't think they would get burned. Now comes the excuses. They never saw it coming. They were caught off guard. Uh, 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 they, they didn't expect this kind of behavior from them. It's like making a deal with evil, but expecting never to have to pay the price. It's like gambling in the back room and staking all that you have, everything that you own, your career, your, your, your home, even your reputation on what you know is a lie. It's like, it's like everything that you have, you have put it up and wagered it all based on some falsehoods. The Bible teaches that everything done in the dark must come to light. Amen. God has determined, as he said in Luke chapter 12, verses 2 through 3, that the secrets will be uncovered. Listen to this. Not only will the secrets be uncovered, but the truth will come forth. And God's thoughts about every behavior and every action will be vindicated. What's done in the dark will come to the light. 
That's why today I, I just wanted to, to take a moment and introduce you to this uh, uh, the series of sermons that God has placed on my heart. So, so in the next coming weeks, I'll be delivering a couple more sermons under the same heading. But today, let me tell you, in what little time is left, I want to leave you with these words. When things are shaking, state everything on what will remain. Amen. Listen, there are two kinds of shaking. The Bible speaks of, of, of spiritual shaking. It also speaks of natural shaking. A, a spiritual shaking is this, a supernatural event that some may classify as spiritual, others may classify as myth, mystical, but it's a, it's a, it's a supernatural event uh, or a religious uh, thing that happens and leaves others in awe others in wonder. In the book of Acts chapter 16, the Bible speaks of Paul and Silas uh, uh, who were in Macedonia preaching and teaching the word of God. They came upon this, this girl and, and who was filled with a demonic spirit and they healed her. But because of their preaching and teaching the word of God, the Bible tells us that they were imprisoned by the Macedonian. <clears throat> but lo and behold, at midnight, come on, you know the story. At midnight, Paul and Silas were found praying and singing songs of God, hymns unto their God. This, this was a great earthquake. So the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors swung open of the prison. And those who were who had been held captive, they were set free. Shackles, chains fell off. Amen. This was a spiritual shaking, uh, a, a supernatural event that left those uh, in awe and wonder of what had just happened. Shaking. But then there is this natural shaking that happens. For some of you well-educated, well-tutored, uh, 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 and well-learned uh, meteorologist type, uh, yes, the earth is always moving, uh, trembling and shaking in some form or fashion. In fact, Psalms 46 tells us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Why? Because therefore we will not fear though the earth is giving way, though the mountains be moved and, and, and though the mountains tremble, listen, and it swells, though its waters roar and with and foam. Amen. Yes, the earth is always moving. I know it. We know it. The earth is always spinning. There is some kind of tremble, some kind of, of shaking of some sort. But that kind of natural shaking is not what I'm referring to. But what I am referring to is this, is that when God speaks and allows events uh, uh, that shake everything made in the earth, such as spoken in our text. This kind of shaking, it, it causes everything made by hand to crumble. Look at our text today. Amen. Look at our text. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. It says, see that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on the earth much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. Verse 26 goes on to say, and that time his voice shook the earth. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but not he, but now he has promised yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The first thing I want to tell you today is 
that kind of shaking has to do with events that, that when they happen, they leave us stunned or even traumatized as some of us are today over what happened this past week. When there is a shaking, life changes. It changes in ways that, that we never would have imagined. Such is the case in events that played out throughout 2020. And now here we are in 2021, and we're still feeling the shaking happening. When things happen that we thought would never happen, it's exactly what has taken place because of, one, the coronavirus. The worst COVID-19 outbreak and most, and, and most lives lost in the most civilized country in the world. But our scripture lets us know that there is going to be a shaking. Things are shaking. The first thing I want to tell you is this. Believe the report of the Lord. We are living in the world full of contrasting reports. Everybody has something that they want to say, that they want to report on. Satan and the world system gives their reports, while God and his servants, yes, we give a different report. Whose report, may I ask, will you believe? Isaiah 53, 1 says it this way. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who places people in your life that feeds you the truth? Think about it. There is somebody in your life that tells you like it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. that person that just came to mind, that person. Think back now, who is that person? Is it your mother? Your great grandmother? Your nana? How about your teacher? Okay, your mentor or, 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 or that one person that you hate to see coming. Why? Because that one person always sets it right, always tells you like it is. That one person is the one person that never fibs to you, never lies to you. They're always telling you the truth, reading you up one side and down the next. That person. In other words, don't believe the hype. Just because something sounds good doesn't mean it's true. Hebrews 2 and 1 says it this way. Therefore, we must give way to the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. Be careful of itching ears. The term itching ears is found only once in the Bible. Second Timothy 4 says, for the time will come when they, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, the true word, and shall be turned unto fables. Be careful that you do not develop itching ears, turning to fables, turning to lies, looking for something to hold on to, something that tickles you. It's just what you wanted to hear. Be careful of itching ears. So, so think back now. Who is that one person that always speaks the truth to you? Believe that person's report. Undoubtedly, it will be the word of the Lord. Let God be true and every man a liar. Whose report shall you believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. Here's the second thing. Recognize the sign of the times. Look at our text. Our text mentions it mentions in verse 26, at that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he, he has promised 
Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The earth and the heavens are shaking right now. This phrase, yet not once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is, things that have been, that have been made. Listen, there is a shaking going on in the earth. In fact, do you not know that there were over some 50 uh, 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 world events last year that, that took place just in January alone? Uh, uh, check Wikipedia. Just in January 2020 alone, uh, there were many. Listen to the list. I, I won't read them all, but listen to the list. Uh, there were armed, armed conflicts and attacks throughout the world. There was an attack on the United States Embassy in Baghdad. There's another one in Afghan, Afghan, the Taliban killed 23 security force members in three separate attacks. Also in January 2020, Jakarta flood happened where some 21 people or more were killed and some 19,000 people displaced because of rising waters in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta. Terrorism in Kenya took place where four children were killed. We all know COVID-19 was already happening, but, but, but it was in January that it began to take hold in the United States that we learned, later learned through the media. These are just a few things that happened just in the first two weeks of January in 2020. And you still had 11 months to go. A lot happened in January. World events that shook this earth. But, but it wasn't until March, get this, that the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a worldwide pandemic. And there were many more. Here's the point I'm making. In every one of these events, there was a loss of life. Whether one, 31, 30, 30,000, or hundreds of thousands, God is shaking the earth and people are dying. They're dying at alarming rates. Just in this country, this week, uh, we have experienced a total plus 370,000 deaths because of the coronavirus. Just in this country. The Bible speaks of these kind of signs that we will see, such as wars, <coughs> rumors of wars, and, 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 and world events, hunger, and, and, and uh, uh, nations rising against nations, son against father. Matthew 24 says, and ye shall hear of wars, rumors of wars, and, and see that ye not be afraid. See that you're not troubled. Yes, as the earth is shaking, be not troubled. Why? Because all these things must come to pass. And even so, the end is not yet. But there is a shaking happening in the earth. As the earth shakes, things are starting to crumble. Dynasties are beginning to fall. Eyes all around the world no longer look at America as the superpower. Things are changing. Institutions and organizations are closing their doors for the very first time. Economics around the world are impacted. Individually, many are starting to fall away from the true word of God. Listen. I, I so believe that, that, that God is allowing the earth to shake so that everything that is, uh, that is made that doesn't bring him glory will crumble and fail. I, 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 did, I didn't say that everything is going to fail. No, hear me, hear me. I said everything that doesn't bring God glory 
will crumble and fail. If you don't believe me, then then, then here's another sign. Uh, 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 the, the same type of scenario played out in the book of Haggai. When the people who were working to complete the house of the Lord became disobedient and they and their ways interfered with the Lord's plan to occupy the house. In the process of building the house, the people of God got slack in their doing. They became weary and, and they began to fall away. During this time, they experienced earth shaking events that impacted their livelihood, their land their mountains, the grain and the harvesting of food and oil were all impacted. God withheld the dew and caused the earth to withhold its fruit. That's when God sent the young prophet Haggai with a word, the truth, to stir up the hearts of the people, saying, be strong and I, I, I am with you according to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt. What God says next in, in Haggai 2.6, you don't have to turn there, I'll tell you, but jot it down so that you may read it later. What God said in Haggai 2.6, he says, for thus says the Lord, and I will shake all nations. No, for thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land. And I will shake all nations that they shall come to desire, to the desire of all nations. And I will fill the temple with God, says the Lord. I will fill the temple with the glory of God. Don't miss the signs of the times. Uh, there is a shaking happening on this earth so that everything that is not of him that doesn't bring him glory will fail. Here's the third thing. Stake everything on what will remain. Look at that verse 27 there in Hebrews chapter 12. It says this phrase, yet, yet, yet once more indicates the removal of things that are shaky. That is things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. So what is it that can't be shaken? What things shall remain? I'm, I'm glad you asked. There are four things that shall remain. The first is this, the throne of God. No matter what is shaking, the first thing that shall uh, 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 uh that, that shall remain is the throne of God. When we turn to Psalms uh, 45 and 6, it, it lets us know that we can lift up our hearts with, with gratitude. Why? Because whatever else is happening in the world, we can test, uh, testify and that, that the throne of God will not be shaken. The throne of God shall remain. Today we have have to look above things and, and look hard, far and wide, uh, uh, just to see things that are permanent. Psalms 90 uh, tells, us, tells us that, but, but even the heavens will be shaken one day. Isaiah 34 says, but God who is above the heavens is eternal and immutable. Nothing can shake or change him. It should come as no surprise, but yet to comfort you and to assure you to every believer to know that when everything else in the world is shaking in heaven and in earth, the throne of God can never be shaken. The second of four things is this. So, so what shall remain? The word of God, which can never be shaken. Read it for yourself. Take the Bible in your hand. Read it, read it, read it. The Bible is full of the gospel's promises. It's, it's full of, of promises made to you and I. Uh, we, we are assured of this by Mark 13, 31, which says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words by, by no means will pass away. 
when you take the Bible in your hand and, and, and read it for yourself, you will find that God's promises will never be shaken. There are over some 30,000 promises throughout the Bible, throughout the word of God, and not one of them has ever failed. For, for they are established in his word. God's promises are yes and amen. When you take the Bible in your hand and, and you read it for yourself, uh, uh, you will find that God's power will never be shaken. In God's word, you will find that his power is, is, is there to convict. That you will find that, that, that there is power that converts us. You will find that, that there is cleansing power in the word of God. There is power that comforts us. There is power that counsels us. Oh, the wonder working power of the Lord. God's power will never fail. The third thing is of the four is this, God's shaking uh, uh, prophecies or God's spoken prophecies can never be shaken. When you hold the Bible in your hand and you read it for yourself, you will learn that the prophecies are forever coming true. They can't be shaken. Many men around the world have searched and researched the scriptures in hopes to, uh, to dispel the biblical prophecies, but only to find many of them have already been fulfilled. Second Peter says, so never get high or puffed up or scoff at the, the or dispel God's spoken prophecies. Many of the Bible's prophecies have already been fulfilled, and there are many more yet to come that will be fulfilled. God's spoken prophecies can never be shaken. When you take the Bible in your hand and you read it for yourself, you will find out that God's church, that's right, God's church can never be shaken. Here's what the word says. The word of our Lord recorded in Matthew 16, 18 says this. It assures us of this one thing. When God, when Jesus was talking to his disciples and to us, he said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. There is no other foundation on the face of the earth that can sustain the shaking that's going on and the shaking that, that, that will be unleashed on this earth in the heavens. Amen. But, but, but upon the word of God, amen, upon this rock, I will build my church, says the word of God. Today, while churches and organizations uh, around the world, institutions, uh, the institutionalized church, uh, have closed their doors due to COVID-19 because of the risk and the contraction of the virus, uh, the hour of power that most have come to know on Sunday morning has been suspended. The true church of God remains though. For those who, who, who are just, who are believing that the building is the church, you are misinformed. For those are just the buildings made by man's hands. To every blood washed, every believer, know that ye not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye not your own. For God's true church, that's what that which is in you and is in me can never be shaken. Uh, uh, the buildings may shake. The buildings may rumble. They may crumble and fall. But the temple 
which is not made by man's hands cannot and will not be shaken. When you take the Bible in your hand and read it for yourself, you will find that these things spoken cannot be shaken. Things spoken of God cannot be shaken. There's one more thing I want to leave you with, and that is, as a child of God, you cannot be shaken. Uh, 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 as a child of God, you are his sheep, uh, a blood bought, word taught, true believer that, that follows no other voice but that of the Lord's. John 10, 27 says it this way, my sheep hear my voice. That's right. They hear my voice and, and, and them I know and they follow me. Though the earth is shaking, as a child of, <coughs> as a child of God, you cannot be shaken. Romans 8, 37, 39 says, neither death nor life. No angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, if you are a child of God, let me ask, are, are you a child of God? Have you been born into his family? Is, 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 is your body the temple of the Holy Ghost? Are you not purchased? Have you not been purchased and paid for by the blood of Jesus? Yes. Yes to all of those questions. If you are a child of God, are you not saved, born again, sanctified, baptized, born again? Amen. Yes, if you are a child of God, you might as well say hallelujah because, because if you are a child of God, you have been bought and paid for with a price. Tell the Lord, thank you, because you cannot be shaken. Amen. Before I take my seat, let me say this. Believe the report of the Lord. Recognize the sign of the times and then state everything that you have, who you are and all that you know on the word of God. Why? Because it shall remain. Stake it all, everything on the word that shall remain, knowing that while the earth is shaking, God's throne will never be shaken. God's word will never be shaken. His promises, his power, and his prophecies, they will never be shaken. And last, God's church cannot be shaken. True child of God cannot be shaken. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you today for your word, Lord. When things are shaking, help us to remember your report. Whose report shall we believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Father, let us not be distracted by the signs of the times and, 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 and let us stake everything that we have, everything that we own, even who we are, down to our reputation, on the things that shall remain. While the earth is shaking, Father, bring to our remembrance your promises, your power, and your prophecies, those things that will never be shaken. As your children, we hear your voice, God, and nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, when the earth is shaking, know that if you are a child of God, you will not be shaken. True believer in the word of God. This word 
you will not be shaken. Amen. If this touched you in, in, in any kind of way, and, and if you are not a believer, if you, if you are not a child of God, now is a good time to give your life to Christ. If you will, just repeat after me, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I can't save myself, but you can save me. Come into my heart, Lord. Save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you recited that prayer, simple prayer, then you are saved. But it's not the mere words that save you. It's what you believe in your heart. If you pray that prayer and you believe it in your heart, you are now saved. And if I'm speaking to you and you gave your life to Christ today, will you go to hoskinsabc.com and let us know that you gave your life to Christ today? I'd like to personally reach out to you. Amen. And to celebrate with you on this joyous occasion, the day that you gave your life to Christ. Amen. While the church is in suspension, don't fall away from the word of God. Embrace the word of God. Don't let what's shaking in the earth, in the heavens, in the sea, distract you. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your ears in tune with what he's saying. And, and allow your heart to be guided by spirit. Amen. Go and be blessed. Thank you for joining us here, joining me today in this word that God laid on my heart. Tune in next week and I'll have another sermon in the series for you. Amen. God bless. Shaking, shaking in our land There's a battle for the souls of man Wake up, Christian, and strengthen what remains For there's a shaking, a shaking in our land There's a shaking, shaking in our land There's a battle for the souls of man Wake up Christian and strengthen what remains, for there's a shaking, a shaking in